Good evening. Good evening, St. Mark. How are you this evening? Welcome once again to 
um, our TNT, our thirst quenching Thursday, our Thursday night teaching. Amen. Um, I am excited uh, to be with you all on tonight. I thank um, our pastor um, for trusting us. I mean, he he could have pulled um, out of his uh, flock any one of us to stand and um, do this. So I am honored and privileged on tonight um, to be able to share with you all tonight. Um, we are remembering our pastor even on tonight. Um, we, we're always praying for him and praying for our first lady and our first family and our church, but especially on um, tonight um, as the loss of loved ones uh, seem to have uh, kicked this year off. Uh, so it's a lot going on um, in spite of living in, a, in such a, a critical and crucial time um, that we're living in. Y'all, prayer is essential. It is essential for us to pray, pray without ceasing for us to pray continuously um, for everybody, for um, leadership all over the country, um, president, um, different officials, um, and especially um, our men and women of God who are steadfast and unmovable in these times, um, continuing to give hope, continuing to spread the word of God, to spread the good news and to keep us encouraged and such a time as this. We thank our pastor, St. Mark. We thank our pastor, Pastor Andre Thurman, um, for just being consistent. I mean, his love, his endurance, um, in spite of whatever is going on, um, we've been fed every week um, consistently. And we've been like this on this virtual setting, trying to uh, still move ministry forward. And he has been consistent and has had us in place so we are grateful and we are thankful uh, for that. Um, I'm going to jump right in, y'all. Um, got a message. Uh, my assignment is clear on tonight. And um, I will be um, teaching from 2 Corinthians, this second epistle of, uh, of Paul to this church of Corinth. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, 7 through the ninth verse. It simply says this, it says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Verse eight says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Verse nine says, persecuted but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroy. And I simply want to encourage you tonight, St. Mark family and friends and uh, visitors, we're struggling, but we're still winning. We are struggling, but we are still, we're still winning. We are troubled on every side yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We're cast down, but not destroyed. We're struggling, but we're still winning. My brothers and sisters, I'm reminded of a story. A man came across a cocoon of the imperial moth. He decided to take the cocoon home because he wanted to watch the moth emerge from it. And one day as he was walking past the cocoon, he saw a tiny opening in the cocoon. So he pulled up a chair and he sat down and he watched for several hours, the moth struggle, but couldn't seem to force its body past a certain point of the cocoon. So what the man does, he, um, he decides that something was wrong. He got his knife and he cut the remaining bit of the cocoon. The moth emerged easily. Its body was large and swollen. Its wings was tiny and swiveled. The man expected that in a couple of hours, those wings would spread out into their natural beauty. But they didn't. 
Instead of that, the moth becoming a creature um, free to fly. That moth spent the rest of its life dragging around on a swollen body and swiveled wings. What the man didn't know was that the constricting cocoon and the struggle necessary to get through that tiny opening, watch it, was God's way of forcing fluid from the moth's body into the moth's wings. The merciful snip from the man was really cruelty to the moth. Wait a minute. Setting this moth free and stopping the struggle that this moth was going through was actually cruelty to the moth. And that's because sometimes struggle is exactly what we need. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes struggle is exactly what we need. It's through struggle, family, that many of us discover our wings. It is through struggle that many of us learn how to fly. I don't know if you realize it yet, but uh, you are out every day trying to figure out what is life all about. We, 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 we try to figure life out. Everybody, whether the case is stated or is trying to figure out what life is all about. Does life have a pattern? Are there any designs to life? I think I ought to tell you this evening, St. Mark family, friends, visitors, that you will misread life if you think that life is a picnic. Oh, my God. You will misread life if you think that life is a party. I will tell you what life is, just in case you ain't figured it out yet. Life is a struggle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's it's a struggle. That is what it is. It's a struggle from the time that we are born until the time that we die. Life is a struggle, a struggle. Watch this. That is tied in with our capacity to suffer. Oh, my God. You are struggling. Um, Your struggle is tied to what God feels that he has enabled you and equipped you to handle. Oh my God. That means that God can trust you. That means that, 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 that what you feel uh, right now that you are going through that you have considered to be too much right now in this season that you are going in, Lord, I'm experiencing this, I'm experiencing that. Lord, I don't know how I'm going to make, Lord, this is happening. And when I get through this, this next thing is happening. But God says, I have given you the capacity for the struggle that you are experiencing. Some, some days are good. Uh, some days are bad. But it's all a struggle. You see, my brothers and sisters, life is divided into five uh, quarters. And I'm going to expose somebody's business and you're going to find out what quarter you in. The first quarter is from zero to the age of 17. The second quarter is 17 to 35. The third quarter is 36 to 52. The fourth quarter is, is 53 to 70. And 71 and up is overtime. The average man lives 74 years. That is approximately 888 months. That is 3,848 weeks, um, 27,010 days. That is 648,240 hours. That is 38,894,400 minutes. And that is 2,022,508,800 heartbeats. And it's all a struggle. And the reason, if I can just give you this, 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 this general point that, that, that covers why although you're struggling, you're still winning. That reason is because of the treasure that, that God has put in earthen vessels. Oh my God, you have a treasure on the inside of you. 
The treasure Paul is talking about is the incalculable riches of the gospel. Um, the uh, uh, amazingly, the God of the universe, watch, watch what he did. He chose to deposit the priceless truth of Christ and his gospel into common and unimpressive human vessels. That's why you went in that. That's why you went in in spite of your struggles, in spite of your pains, in spite of everything you're going through. You have a treasure trapped on the inside of you. So can I give you something? Can I give you some encouragement right now? You're surviving your right now because of you're not yet. Let me say that again. You're surviving your right now because of you're not yet. Hallelujah, somebody. The word earthen re refers to a baked clay pot or container. They were cheap clay pots, easily replaceable storage containers, most often used for handling garbage and human waste. The term vessel means a hollow instrument or tool. Let me tell you about clay pots. Can I just deal with it for just a second? I, I got about four points and we're going to go through them. But can I just deal with clay pots? Because we're clay pots. We're clay pots. Let, let us understand tonight what, what we really are, right? Okay, okay. A clay pot is baked dirt. <laughs> Cheap, common, breakable, replaceable, essentially valueless. You, 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 you know, um, I, I may have some old school, uh, people on, on the line tonight. Um, you know, that, 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 that has experienced the clay pot. I mean, you know, your grandmother may have had one of them kind of orange brown brick color clay pots in the house. And, 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 you know, you, you get them from the, from the store, from home Depot or, 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 or from the, from the nearest hardware store. And, you know, we, we got fancy stuff. Now we don't, we don't use those clay pots no more. Y'all we, we want decor. We want stuff, you know, that match our furniture and match our paint schemes and stuff like that. But I got a couple of people on the line that know what clay pots are and how they look and, and 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 you know we we would go down to the garden store but the thing about a clay pot if you drop one it's no big deal i mean you know it, it's just a clay pot you know clay pots but what i realize about uh, a clay pot in ancient times clay pots were used for several things sometimes something important was in a clay pot like the dead uh, sea scrolls was in a clay pot but four types, there are four types of clay pots were used in ancient Israel as holders, watch this, of wine, water, grain, uh, wheat, and oil. Now, what is important to know here is that for these to be used, they had to go through, watch it, a process. The grain and the wine represents the Holy Communion, which speaks of the broken body of Jesus and the blood that he shed. Uh, to make bread, you take the wheat or grain, then crush and beat it to make dough. Then you punch the dough, oh my God, and put it into the fiery heat for it to become bread. That is what uh, uh, happened to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the cross. He became the bread of life to get wine the grapes not only have to be plucked but they also need to be crushed and trodden upon likewise our lord and savior was trodden upon by the judgment of god and and he became new wine for all of us olive oil it comes from the olive fruit but when you press the fruit real hard you would not find oil only a white sap also, the fruit tastes very bitter. To get the oil out of the olive, the fruit and its seeds must be crushed by a great weight in an olive press. The crushing also removes the bitterness. In the same manner, Jesus was crushed under the burden and the weight of our sins and under the judgment of a holy God. He was crushed to become the anointed oil that heals us today. Family, the New Testament was not written by the elite of Egypt or Greece or Rome or even Israel. 
the greatest scholars in the world at that time were down in Egypt. But God passed all of them. Why? God never used any of them, not of, of none of them. He just used, watch this, clay pots. We have peasants and fishermen, smelly guys and, and tax collectors, clay pots, you know, who, who were chosen to hold and to proclaim and to write the priceless treasure of, of the gospel truth. God is still doing that. You do know that you are a clay pot. <laughs> he is still passing the elite. Isn't he? You know you don't deserve where you are right now. You don't you know you don't deserve what you have right now. You know you don't qualify. Amen. For some of the things that you have experienced and some of the levels that you have made uh it to in your life. He is still passing by the hard-hearted, not listening, proud intellectuals. They may be sitting in their ivory towers in universities and sitting in their ivory towers in the seminaries and sitting in their uh, uh, bishoprics and in their positions of authority in the church. And God is finding what he's doing, looking past them, and he's finding the humble who will carry the treasure of saving truth. It is the, the amazing, um, um, it is uh, amazing that God delights in using humble common people like me and you to be his instruments by using frail, valuable people. God makes it clear to all that the power of the gospel, watch it, lies not in the human messenger, but in him. Paul responded in this second epistle to this. Corinthian church to his attackers by saying the one true and living God uses humble, common, watch this, garbage containers. Those considered worthless by the world to be the vessels he uses to manifest his power to transform hearts through the gospel. And you ask, how can that work? Let me explain it this way, church. <laughs> We are not the message. We preach the truth that is powerful. We are weak, common, plain, fragile, breakable, dishonorable, and disposable clay pots who should be taking the garbage out. But instead, we're bringing the glory of God in. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. We are winning because of the treasure that is put in that earthen vessel. This earthen vessel, th th this, 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 this dirty container. I wish y'all would keep it real low tonight. Th this, this sinful creature, amen. Th this guy who always falls short, all, always gets it wrong, always, listen, come on, come on. He, I, I don't know y'all, I mean, listen, I understand it. He puts his treasure, he trusts me enough. He thinks something of me to put something that's priceless, that's so valuable on the inside of me. Hallelujah, somebody. Paul says it in the text. He says it. He says, we are troubled. Watch it. On every side. Paul says, when I look to the left, there's trouble. Come on, y'all. Y'all can witness. Come on. Y'all can witness on tonight. When I look to the right, there's trouble. Even in front of me, there's trouble. Even in the back of me, there's trouble. Paul says we are troubled on every side. But this is a good time for me to give you my first point on how you can win even in the midst of your struggle. The first way that you can win in the midst of your struggle, and it's right there in the text, Paul says, you have to learn not to worry. Oh my God. If you want to win in the midst of your struggle or in the midst of your trouble, you have to learn how not to worry. He says it right there. He says, we are troubled on every side, but we are not distressed. I ain't worried about nothing. 
I'm not ready. This ain't my first rodeo. <laughs> because see, we 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 don't worry because we still have hope, and our hope is in Jesus Christ. But I've discovered, y'all, this thing about trouble. Y'all isn't trouble. Come on, talk, talk, talk back to I know I can't see y'all, but I, I can feel y'all. Isn't it something about trouble? Isn't trouble so disrespectful? <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's so disrespectful. You don't have to find trouble because trouble will find you. Ain't it amazing how trouble will drive down your street, back up in your driveway, get out of its vehicle and walk right into your house without even knocking? You don't have to find trouble. Trouble is going to find you. The second thing you got to notice about trouble is this, and this is a good thing. God does his best work in the midst of trouble. Can I call a couple of witnesses? Because y'all acting funny with me. Y'all acting funny with me. God does some of his be best work in the midst of trouble. I had a couple of conversations. I'm going to bring some biblical witnesses because y'all acting brand new with me on the, on the virtual, on the virtual uh, Bible class on tonight. I, I got, I got some biblical witnesses with me today. Before I got on the call, I had a conversation with Moses and Moses, Moses said, Elder J, he said, he said, I had a watery grave in front of me. I had Pharaoh behind me and God told me to stretch out my rod. And when I stretched out my rod, he came down and put the wind in the full Nelson and made a freeway down my Red Sea. God does some of his best work in the midst of trouble. Y'all ain't feeling me yet. Hold on. Hold on. I had another conversation with some Hebrew boys and they said, well, Elder J, check this out. Nebuchadnezzar threw us into the fiery furnace. But what Nebuchadnezzar failed to realize is that Jesus is a present help. In the time of trouble, y'all gonna do me like this on the virtual call. Hallelujah, somebody. And he came and he showed up as a firefighter. Has he showed up anybody? Has he came through? I'm talking about with the whole with, with the whole fire resistance suit on. Oh, oh my god, as a fire, and he took the flames out of the fire and turned the furnace into a fellowship hall. God does some of his best work in the midst of our troubles. Some of you still arguing with me. Y'all don't feel me yet. Well, I had another witness, another biblical character I had a conversation with. I said, hey, Daniel, Daniel, say what's up, Elder J? He says, listen, they threw me in the lion's den and they threw me in the lion's den for praying. He said, yes, they did, Rail. He said, they threw me in there for praying. He said, the king set me free. He says, but you know what I did? I went right back to my quarters. Got right back down on my knees, <laughs> let up my window, looked toward Jerusalem and called on the God of Jerusalem. They threw me into the lion's den. And guess what Jesus did? <laughs> Jesus showed up as a lion tamer. And what he did was, Elder J, he put those lions on a 24 hour fast while I was in the den. God does his best work when we're in the midst of our troubles. I know y'all still arguing with me, but I got some something else. Y'all remember when the when the wine ran out at the wine, at the wedding feast of Cana and they and and and, and what happened was uh, uh uh Mary told the boys to go fill the water pots up with water and they fill the water pots up and Jesus came in and turned the water into wine without using grapes. <laughs> he does his best work in the midst of trouble. I got one more witness. <laughs> The woman with the issue of blood, we don't know her name. We just know her issue. She said, Elder J, check this out. She said, I had an issue for 12 long years, 12 long years of trouble. She said, I spent all that I had on earthly doctors and none of them was good enough to help me. He, she said, but I, I heard Elder J that Jesus was passing by. And I said, if I can just press my way and, 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 and if I can just uh, uh, get through everybody and press my way through the crowd and touch the hem of his garment, she said, I know I will find a pharmaceutical shop in the hem of his garment because Jesus 
does some of his best work in the midst of trouble. They always said that you find yourself in three places in life. They say you find yourself going into trouble. They say you find yourself in the midst of trouble. Or they say you find yourself coming out of trouble. And just in case there's somebody on the line on tonight um, that has been delivered from trouble. I want to encourage you to stay read up, to stay prayed up, and to stay suited up. Because some more trouble just might be headed your way. Paul says we are troubled on every side. I'm in the text, y'all. But we are not distressed. We troubled, but we ain't worried. Hallelujah, somebody. We 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 not worried. In other words, we uh what what, what he's saying is, um um. Our hope is in Jesus alone. Our hope is not placed in circumstances. Our hope is in Jesus alone. And you have to realize in the midst of your struggle that you are not fighting, watch this, to victory, but you're fighting from victory. That is why Paul tells the church of Corinth in, in the first epistle, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 57, but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So I stopped by to tell you this evening, if you have Jesus, you have victory and you are winning in the midst of your struggle. Paul says that we are troubled on every side, but we are not distressed. First reason that you can win in the midst of your struggle is when you learn how not to worry. The second reason that you can win, and it's right there in the text, in the midst of your struggle is when you learn how to be perplexed. Oh, watch this. Paul says, he says that we have trouble on every side, yet we're not distressed, right? Then he says, we are perplexed, but not in distress. So I had to dig into that word perplexed and what perplexed means is uncertain, but what despair means is a loss of hope. So that means that I can win. I can win in the midst of my struggles if I learn how to be perplexed. So what that means is I can learn to be uncertain on how God going to do it, but I'm not in despair. Meaning that he ain't going to do it. Hallelujah, somebody. I'm not, I'm, I, my, my hope is not lost. I'm not saying that I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have a way out of this. I'm saying I don't know how God going to do it, but guess what? He going to do it because this ain't the first time that he done it. And whatever he ain't did yet, he's still able to do. I wish I was talking to somebody on the virtual Bible class tonight. You know that if God haven't done it yet, then that doesn't mean that he ain't capable. So I'm still optimistic. I'm st I still got faith. I'm still believing. I still know that even in the midst of the, tr I'm uncertain on how he going to work this out. But I feel just like the Hebrew boys. <laughs> even if he don't, I know he's still able, but I don't know how he going to do it. But I am not in despair. See, Paul says, I'm going to tell you what happens. Paul says it like this. He says that sometimes the devil tries to make us suffer from temporary amnesia. That's what it is. That, that's what it is. He, you, you see, sometimes the devil tries to make you think that um, uh, God has not ever done nothing for you. He tries to make you think uh, that God has never brought you out of anything. But I wish I was talking to some, some baptized believers in this place that it went through hell and high water just to know and serve notice on the devil. I know that the things that I've been through, it ain't been nothing but God that brought me through. Hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> I know that God is a bridge over troubled waters. If he ain't did it for me, I've witnessed him do it for somebody else. Hallelujah, somebody. I know, hallelujah, that God will put food on your table when you ain't got no money to buy food. He'll send food. I wish I was talking to some witnesses here. 
Hallelujah, somebody. I don't know about you, but I know that God is a healer. I didn't seen him do it. I didn't seen him heal too many times. I haven't been sick, you know, uh, 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 fatally or severely, but I've seen him heal cancer. Hallelujah, somebody. I've seen him heal diabetes. Hallelujah, somebody. I, I've seen him heal depression. Oh my God, I've seen him him, him fix a, a contrite spirit. I've seen him regulate a mind that was discombobulated. I've seen God do stuff like that. Hallelujah. And if he did it before, he could do it again. Same God right now. <laughs> Same God back then. Hallelujah. He's able to do it. No money in your pocket. He's able to do it. So Paul says, we are perplexed, but not in despair. So we are uncertain, but our hope is not lost. In other words, we got faith for it. We know that God is able to do it because we walk by faith. Our faith is our evidence. Let me give y'all these last uh, two points so that we can get up out of here, y'all. The third uh, uh, reason that you can win in the midst of your struggle is you learn that God has not forsaken you. Oh, my God. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. I can't see y'all. I wish I could. But you can. You can win and you are a winner even in the midst of your struggle because you realize that God has not forsaken you. God is with you no matter what you are going through. God is with you. Verse 10 says it like this, and I'm in the text, y'all. I'm still in 2 Corinthians 4. I'm in verse 10. He says, always bearing about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus. That's the salvation that's on the inside of us, y'all. Hallelujah, somebody. Let, let, let me give you this real quick. I, I wasn't, I wasn't going to give y'all this, but I'm, I'm going to give y'all this. I'm going to give y'all this real quick, real quick. Psalms 27. Uh, verses one and two, it says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Then it goes on to say, when my, when my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. That the Lord is means that he's present. That is not the Lord was this. That means that the Lord is this. He is my light. He's my vision in the midst of dark situations. He is my salvation. He, say, he keeps me from the enemy. Hallelujah, somebody. And the, and, the, and the devil don't want you to realize that God has not forsaken you. And I'm going to tell you something. Your mind is playing tricks on you, making you think because you feel alone. That you are alone. But God has not forsaken you. The third thing. The third reason you can win in the midst of your struggle is because God. You got to know. You got to learn. You have to receive it. He has not forsaken you. Let me give you this fourth and final point. On the reason that you can win even in the midst of your struggle. You can win in the midst of your struggle when you learn that a knockdown is not a knockout. <laughs> when you learn <laughs> that a knockdown is not a knockout. The text says in verse nine, it says persecuted, but not forsaken. But then it says cast down, but not destroyed. Y'all listen. 
I don't know who I'm talking to on tonight, but I want to tell you this. I know the punches of life seems like it keeps knocking you down. I don't know who I'm ministering to on tonight. I know <laughs> that the punches just keeps on coming. It feel like that you are in the life ring with Mike Tyson and he studied throwing you power punches. He studied throwing you body blows. He studied throwing you uppercuts. He studied throwing you left hooks and right hooks. He studied moving and, and switching and, 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 and punching. And it seems the more you get punched, the, the harder it feels and the more it breaks you down and, and the more it breaks you down and the more it breaks you down until it knocks you all the way down to the ground. But see, what the enemy doesn't realize for a person that possess what's on the inside of us is when we get knocked down, the best thing that we've learned how to do while we're down there is pray. <laughs> I learned I learned how to pray. <laughs> I learned I learned how to seek his face. Hallelujah, somebody. I, I learned how to get in his presence. I, I learned I learned uh, 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 how to touch heaven while I'm down now, because now since I'm down now, I realize that I ain't got nothing else to lose. So I might as well call on them. Hallelujah, somebody. A knockdown is not a knockout. To piggyback on that Psalms 27 in my closing. The first reason you can win in the midst of your struggles is when you learn um, how not to worry. The second way that you can win in the midst of your struggles is to learn how to be perplexed, uncertain, but not in despair. You, you, you haven't lost hope. The third reason that you can uh, win in the midst of your struggles is to understand that God has not forsaken you. And the fourth thing that you can, um, way you can understand that you're winning in the midst of your struggles is to understand that a knockdown is not a knockout. Y'all, I close with this. In Psalms 27, what it reveals to us in that Psalms is what the enemy is after not only is the enemy trying to convince us that our struggles is all that we'll ever experience in life because there's so much and they're so um um unbearable they seem to be um kicking and scratching and knocking and punching and shooting and stabbing but what the enemy doesn't want you to realize is that he's after your vision. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking. To, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying the vision that God has given you for your life. That the Lord is my light that represents God as our vision. And the enemy is, he's trying to distort it. He's trying to distract it. He's trying to, to throw things every which away, like my grandmama say, every which away, to try to distract you. Then the salvation, Lord is my light and my salvation. The enemy wants you um, to be misconstrued on your assurance, not insurance, assurance, blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory div divine. Heir of salvation. Purchased by God. Born of his spirit. Washed in his blood. His assurance is what the enemy wants you to question. And then he wants to do all of that and then make you fear. He wants you to be afraid. And, and that's what the time we li li Look around, y'all. We're living in fear of a lot of things. We're seeing, we're seeing pandemic. We're seeing this virus mutate in different versions of it. We're seeing violence. I mean, get even more loony and crazy than it's already been. We're seeing crime. I mean, people just walking in 
top shelf stores just grabbing whatever they want and walking out bag and truck scene and i mean this stuff we're living in fear y'all we don't even want to, I mean, we, 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 and, and I know y'all, y'all can tell the truth. We can go certain places now that we used to go freely. And now we're uncomfortable. Now we're looking around. Now we're always expecting something to possibly come up or something to possibly happen. And we're feeding ourselves continuously with that. But I come to tell you <laughs> this clay pot that God has put that treasure in, you're going to survive. <laughs> you're going to make it through and you're going to win. St. Mark, we're going to win. It don't matter what we, what we struggling with. <laughs> it don't matter what you, you know, what seems to have gotten the best of us. And I'm saying St. Mark, because I'm talking to our ministry. Amen. We may be struggling, but we still winning. Y'all, I'm out of time, but I'm not, I'm not out of word. I can go home because this message, it really blessed me because I was looking at Paul and um, <laughs> you, you need to go back and really read this story because this, this Corinthian church was something else. I mean, th this was one of the hardest letters, uh, especially for any man of God to write because this, this second epistle, even dealing with kind of the text that we dealt with today. Paul was actually writing a letter to defend himself. <laughs> Boy, you know, we could talk, we could talk about pastors and we could talk about how churches are ran. But if we ever gave these pastors, pastors a mic to really say and defend and say how they feel. I mean, like for real, without you getting in your feelings or without you, you, you know, <laughs> Man, look, we, we can't even, we can't even take, um, hard discipline, medium, medium discipline. We trying to leave. We trying to go find someplace else to go and serve and everything. But St. Mark, we struggling, but we still winning. We still winning. We're still winning because we're not worried. We're not worried. Our hope is in God. We're still win winning because we're not uncertain. I mean, we're not at, at a loss or, or at despair. We our, our hope is not lost. We may not know how God is going to do it. But one thing we do know is that he is. St. Mark, we, we, we know that God hasn't forsaken us. We know that. We, we, we're confident in that. We got proof. We got proof. If, if yeah, mm, yeah. Uh -huh. we, we got proof that he is with us. Amen. And uh, what what we know, because, you know, um, we we not we not new to this. We true to this. We know that knockdowns. <laughs> they don't mean nothing. We, we get up from those. <laughs> we get right back up from those. We dust ourselves off. We get ourselves all the way back together and we get back in our place. Y'all listen. I'm, I'm out of time, y'all. Um, I thank God for this opportunity. Um, I thank God for this message. I hope that it blessed you. Again, let's remember our pastor and his family um, in this time, in this season. I mean, death is everywhere. Y'all, um, it's everywhere. It's happening. Um, not, not just from this virus and stuff. I mean, just random random stuff um you know people that that we wasn't expecting that's getting up out of here so we're we're praying and we're staying prayerful and we're being safe y'all and um you know we're getting through this struggle knowing that god is able to do anything but fail listen i love you guys and um i can't wait to to hug on man y'all don't even know like hugs are so rare i didn't know <laughs> i didn't know i know we got a hug in church too so i know it's hard for a lot of us man is to you know to not hug and not you know but man i miss i miss y'all i really do um it's giving time y'all we got it on the screen it's three ways to give y'all we got it through our website stmarkicc.org got our zeal st mark icc nation 
at att.net and we got paypal y'all let's give on tonight st mark icc finance at sbcglobal.net y'all let's um let let's 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 keep let's keep each other lifted you know what i love mama thurman let me just say that i love mama thurman um pastor you gotta share you gotta share her with me i know you sharing her with a lot of people but mama thurman just she be calling me she be leaving me messages um and they so sweet because you know a lot of special women in my life have have gone you know my grandmother on both sides my mother you know so mama thurman she she's something she's something else man i really appreciate her and everything um yeah y'all so um let's uh let's stay focused let's apply this stuff too y'all i mean this this series that pastor just went through on choices oh my god like man just let that play just continue to let that play i mean <laughs> all this year at least the first the, the the next the next five months just just keep listening back to that that type of stuff that stuff that you know that that we kind of look past and we get inspirationalized and you know you know it was a good word or whatever but no that that type of stuff is stuff that you could apply and um and really go to to the next level and go to to the place that god is calling you to be well y'all i love you guys and um i will see y'all next time and until then um stay blessed stay safe and um keep the faith we struggling, but we still winning.